good morning students today is the lecture for this refraction and retinoscopy today is 26th september so up till now we have learned about the visual acuity the properties of light optics of the eye how the light is focused and the mirrors spherical mirror concave mirror and the lenses spherical and cylindrical as well as convex spherical lens then concave spherical lens and then cylindrical lenses so up till now we have known that how the light is focused so many times i have told you that if the light is focused on the light sensitive layer of retina we call it as an immetropic eye the patient will have a 6 by 6 vision but if the light is focused in front of the eye light sensitive layer in front of the so we call it as a myopia and if the light is focused behind the retina we call it as a hypermetropia and you have to correct this refractive error or error of refraction and this is done by a neutralization method and that is called as a retinoscopy so today we will learn something about what is a refraction and what is a retinoscopy so the refraction is the procedure of determining and correcting refractive errors there are two types of refraction objective refraction and subjective refraction so objective methods of refraction includes retinoscopy refractometry and keratometry Retinoscopy is also called as a skyscopy or a shadow test. It is an objective method of finding out the error of refraction by the method of neutralization. So, in your viva, if your examiner asks what is a retinoscopy or what is a refraction, you have to tell that it is an objective method, most valuable and accurate method to estimate optical state of the eye. Just I told whether it is a metropy. hypermetropic or myopic this is the optical state of the eye the correct results to within 0.25 diopter we can achieve the retinoscopy is useful in prescribing corrective lenses for patients who are unable to undergo a subjective refraction that requires a judgment and response from the patient from small children or those with severe intellectual disabilities or communication problem it is difficult to get a response so we can give a refraction according to our examination so objective examination subject to uh, refraction not possible in this small children so retinoscopy is used as a basis for further refinement by subjective refraction so after your retinoscopy evaluation you have to do the subjective refraction on the patient also used to evaluate the accommodative ability of the eye and detect a latent hyperopia so what is the principle of retinoscopy when light is reflected from the plane mirror into the eye the direction of movement of reflected light across the pupil will depend upon the refractive state of the eye what are the prerequisites so we require a dark room the trial box trial frames vision box retinoscope so when you will visit ophthalmology opd you will find all these things in our opd so we are having a retinoscope that is a mirror retinoscope it is a single plane mirror combination of plane and concave mirror the name is prisley smith that will be kept in your examination viva so you have to identify that the name is prisley smith then there are self illuminated retinoscope they are spot and strip these are the two types of self illuminated retinoscope so this is the picture of uh, a is a plane mirror and another one is prisley smith mirror the third picture is it is a self illuminated retinoscope so we can have a vertical horizontal slit or you can have a 
spot retinoscopy with the help of self illuminated retinoscope and for the plain mirror you require a light source for illumination of the retina of the subject or a patient <coughs> so in mirror retinoscope it is the chief most commonly used and source of light is required for self illuminated they are costly but handy the strict retinoscope is popular and the strict retinoscope more sensitive than the spot retinoscopy in detecting astigmatism so plain versus concave mirror retinoscope in practice plain mirror is used in patients with hazy media and high degree of ametropia concave mirror is useful so in, in your viva if the examiner ask in which conditions you can use the concave mirror you have to tell this answer that in patients with hazy media and high degree of ametropia you will use a concave mirror instead of plain mirror so the optics of retinoscopy can be described in three stages these are illumination stage then there is a reflex stage and there is a projection stage we are not going to detail of uh, all these stages just i will enumerate in illumination stage light enters the patient's pupil in reflex stage the light patch will form an image at the far point of the eye and the reflex is seen in the patient's projected to the patient's pupil so this is the procedure if you have visited our opd you can see these uh, procedures the there is a dark room but in today's world we are doing refraction with uh, refractometer but the process if you follow that is in a dark room patient is made to sit at a distance of 1 meter as 1 meter distance is not possible the patient is at 2/3 meters that is arms length so the patient is asked to look at a far point to relax accommodation as you know that the light coming from more than 6 meter they are parallel to the light and at that time the accommodation is relaxed so you have to ask the patient to look at a far point or into the snail and chart and with the retinoscope light is thrown into the patient's eye the surgeon or the retinoscopist or the ophthalmic assistant is sitting in front of the patient slightly eccentric he will not be coming into the way of the patient's vision so patient can have a relaxed fixation at the far point on the snail and chart so there is accommodation is relaxed the an area of fundus is illuminated by light reflected into the patient's eye with retinoscope it forms its image at the far point of the eye according to the optical state of the particular eye the the image is located by moving the illumination across the fundus and noting the behavior of luminous reflex in the pupil the behavior of luminous reflex depends on the refractive status of the patient's eye so in this picture you can see the light is focused on the retina and again the reflected light will be focused from this patient's eye onto the retinoscopist or optometrist eye so in this picture you can see in the hypermetropic eye rays from a point on the retina they are divergent and in myopic eye the rays from a point on the retina they are convergent so the emergent rays from the pupil they can be convergent divergent or parallel and you have to neutralize this by trial lenses it means if the rays are divergent you have to make a neutralization with the help of a convex lens if the rays they are convergent you have to make them divergent a little divergent to focus on the retina so it is a neutralization by adding convex or concave lens as per the need so if according to the image formation if the image is formed between the patient and observer movement of reflex and external light are in opposite direction if the image is behind the patient or observer the two move in same direction we'll see this in a picture 
when far point of the patient's eye corresponds to nodal point of the observer this is called as a neutralization point so in this picture you can very well see the light is thrown on patient's pupil so this is done with a strict retinoscope so outer two so outer two points you can see that the this is a broad beam of light and inside the pupillary area there is a small strip of light so if you are moving the light from the patient's pupil you are observing the shadow of the light reflex inside the pupil so if the shadow moves with it means if you are moving the light outside the pupil in the same direction as well as the shadow moves with the direction you have to neutralize it with a convex lens and if the shadow moves into the opposite direction you have to use a concave lens until the point of reversal is attained so this is a neutralization procedure sometimes you have to use the cycloplegic this is called as a wet retinoscopy and cycloplegic if not used it is called as a dry retinoscopy in viva again uh, you can be asked what is a wet retinoscopy and what is dry retinoscopy so dry retinoscopy means you are not using any ophthalmic drug that is a cycloplegic eye drops are not used so when there is a cycloplegic used you should know the names of this cycloplegic drugs so we have a atropine that is indicated in children below 5 years some prefer bit below 2 years so this is used daily for three consecutive days the concentration is 1% ointment and effect lasts for 10 to 20 days that is mitratic as well as cycloplegic you have to tell to this patients or this mother that the temperature of the child can be increased because of atropine toxicity so generally atropine ointment is given because atropine eye drops have a more toxic effect so there is a absorption from this conjunctiva and there is a transfer there is a bypass of through the nasal lacrimal duct there is no hepatic pathway so the in atropine toxicity will cause the fever in the child you have to tell to the mother that there should be tapered sponging for atropine fomatropine it is used as 2% drops it is instilled every 10 minutes for 6 times but generally 3 times is sufficient the effect lasts for 48 hours for your and uh, this uh, lenses the viva is for 5 mark so you should know something about this drug the cyclopentolate is a short acting effects 6 to 18 hours what is a havener's recommended dose this can be a question in your viva so one drop of cyclopentolate is instilled after every 10 to 15 minutes for three times that is called as a havener's recommended dose and the retinoscopy done after 6 to 9 so this is we have talked about wet retinoscopy sometimes you have to use only mitratic so 10% phenylephrine may be needed in elderly patients but you have to be careful in elderly patients because it can in a patient of cardiac problems or hypertensive patient you should not use this 10% phenylephrine nowadays we are using tropicamide eye drops so this is a table that is uh, telling you cycloplegic in retinoscopy so name of the drug in which patient you are using then time of retinoscopy and tonus allowance tonus means this is called as a cycloplegia when their ciliary muscle is paralyzed what is the normal tone of a ciliary muscle you have to adjust this in after calculation of the retinoscopy so when you are using atropine sulfate the tonus allowance is 1 diopter in homatropine it is 0.5 diopter means you have to subtract this from the total retinoscopy so how you are using this is the following what you have to note when you are throwing light on the patient's pupil dilated or undilated 
डायलेटेड विद ड्रग्स इज वेट रेटेनोस्कोपी एंड डायलेटेड इज ड्राई रेटेनोस्कोपी सो यू आर ऑब्जर्विंग द मूवमेंट ऑफ रिफ्लेक्स आउटसाइड रिफ्लेक्स एंड इन साइड रिफ्लेक्स इन टू दिपिलर एरिया सो द मूवमेंट ऑफ बोथ रिफ्लेक्सेस वेन यू आर टेकिंग इन टू अकाउंट दे आर विथ और अगेंस्ट देन प्लेन ऑफ मूवमेंट ऑफ रिफ्लेक्स दैट इज पैरल टू एक्सटर्नल मूवमेंट और नॉट स्पीड ऑफ मूवमेंट ऑफ रिफ्लेक्स whether it is a fast and slow then what is the intensity of light means what is the intensity of light that is inside the pupillar area and what is the shape of the reflex so if you are taking into account all these things then you can very well come to know what is the neutralization as per your expert so in the first picture what are the observation you can see in figure a you are seeing the light into the center of pupil inside a small beam of light making into a streak and also you are seeing a white light outside the pupillary area so you are comparing external light movement with the movement of the light inside the pupillary area so in b picture you can see it is going with the same light external light is moving into the direction and the internal pupillary light is also moving in the same direction in the c picture the external light and the inside light into the pupillary area they are moving into opposite direction so when they are moving in opposite direction you have to neutralize it with concave or minus lenses to make it a point just like in d you can see there is a totally illuminated pupillary area there is no movement so this is a point of reversal or end point of our retinoscopy that is called as a neutralization point so to estimate the degree of refractive error the movement of red reflex is neutralized by addition of convex spherical lenses when the red reflex was moving with the movement of plane mirror and concave spherical lenses when the red reflex was moving against the movement of plane mirror when a simple spherical error alone is present the movement of red reflex will be neutralized in both vertical and horizontal meridian when a width of movement is seen as just told add convex lenses and when an against moment is seen add concave lenses of increasing power so if only spherical error is present the reflex will be neutralized in horizontal as well as vertical meridian if astigmatism present different neutralization points of two meridians have to be determined what is the end point of retinoscopy with simple plane mirror retinoscope the end point is neutralization of red reflex in all the meridia no movement or just reversal of movement will occur with a strict retinoscope at the end point strict disappears and the pupil appears completely illuminated or completely dark so again this is the same picture just i explained you can see this is a with a strict retinoscope <clears throat> then again so no movement of red reflex you can have a myopia of one diopter with the movement of red reflex along the movement of the retinoscope if the external light if you are moving to the left side and the inside light into the pupillary area is also moving in the same direction your inference can be the patient can be the or the optical state of the eye can be immetropic or hypermetropic or myopia of less than 1 diopter when image is found behind the subject's eye that is observes eye with movement is seen against movement of red reflex to the movement of the retinoscope so if you are moving the external light to the right and the internal light of the beam is moving into the opposite direction the patient's optical state can be myopia of more than 1 diopter so these are the inferences 
if you are throwing light and if there is no movement at all of the shadow or the light inside the pupil you call it as a myopia of one diopter that is minus one movement with the retinoscope you can have a hemetropia hypermetropia or myopia less than one diopter and movement against the retinoscope you have to neutral it with minus lenses so myopia is more than one diopter these are the inferences in tablet form so the retinoscopy is a skill procedure there are problems in retinoscopy that can be red reflex may not be visible or may be poor red reflex may not be visible or poor so what are the problems in retinoscopy so there can be red reflex may not be visible or may be poor it can be because of small pupil hazy media or high ametropia so this can be dealt with using mitratic eye drops or use of converging light with concave mirror i told you this can be your viva question changing retinoscopic findings so this is the objective method of examination it is observed because of abnormally active accommodation and is corrected by fogging technique and cycloplegia cycloplegia means installation of cycloplegic drugs like atropine cyclopentolate or homatropine according to the age of the patient seizure shadows may be seen in patients with regular astigmatism with dilated pupils then conflicting shadows moving in different parts of the pupil area are seen in patients with irregular astigmatism triangular shadow can be seen in a patient with a keratoconus with its apex at the apex of cone on moving the mirror the triangular reflex appears to swirl around its apex this is called as a yawning reflex so yawning reflex is present in keratoconus so th this retinoscopy will give you an idea about the refractive status of the eye so what is the rough estimate so after the retinoscopic findings you have to deduct some diopters for the distance as you have to be in front of the patient for 1 meter but that is not possible so for the seeing the reflex you are sitting at 2/3 distance or at a arm's length so you are not 1 meter away from the patient you are in front of the patient at the arm's length so deduction for a distance and deduction for cycloplegia if you have used a drugs that is weight retinoscopy you have to deduct some diopters for your calculation of retinoscopy findings so that is one diopter for atropine 0.5 for homatropine and 0.75 diopter from cyclopentolate so amount of refractive error equal to the retinoscopic findings whatever you are findings in vertical and horizontal meridian minus deduction for the distance and deduction for tonus allowance if you have used a any cycloplegic drug so it is customary to do retinoscopy both vertically and horizontally and note the values separately so it is done so this is just a figure to know a b c d in a b c d you can see there is a denotation of x and y these are the axes so x axis denotes horizontal and y is vertical what it means x denotes retinoscopic value in horizontal meridian it means light is moving your stream of light is moving in a horizontal meridian up and down that is called as a horizontal and y denotes the value along the vertical meridian it means you are moving the light from side to side left to right but in that process you are calculating the refraction from left to right means it is a vertical meridian you are calculating so when a retinoscopic findings are equal in horizontal and vertical meridian there is an example in this example you can see that the neutralization point in a vertical and horizontal meridian is suppose it is taken as a plus 
and the retinoscopy is done at a 1 meter distance using atropine as a cycloplegy. So as you know that you have to subtract if you have done retinoscopy at 1 meter that is minus 1 and if you have used atropine again you have to do the minus 1 calculation. So in this patient you have plus 7 in vertical as well as plus 7 in horizontal meridian and after subtraction it comes plus 5 in vertical and plus 5 in horizontal meridian it means this patient is having spherical refractive error that is a plus 5 spherical convex lens that will suffice his refractive error so the patient is a hypermetropic as you have given a convex lens so just like that in diagram C, if the patient is, uh, you have done a refraction at 1 meter, again with an atropine, you can see there is a difference of refractive error finding because of there is a change in the retinoscopy. In one axis it is plus 7, in another axis it is a plus 9. So you have to take which is the common. So after subtracting minus 1 for distance and minus 1 for the cycloplegia you arrive at a plus 5 and plus 7 these are the two findings of the refractive error that is retinoscopy and you have to take plus 5 common from plus 7 so it is a plus 5 spherical error with plus 2 is a astigmatic error but as you know that the axis should be 90 degree because it has to act at 180 degree the axis is kept at 90 degree just like that this is for the figure 4 so there are automated uh, refractometers we are using because uh, time consuming process in your busy OPD you have to use an uh, automated this is called as a auto refractometer the objective method of finding out the error of refraction by the use of an equipment it utilizes the principles of indirect ophthalmoscopy just i have mentioned so after the retinoscopy you have to do a subjective refraction these are the, your objective findings and how the patient will react to your findings so there should be a subjective refraction it meant finding out the most suitable lens to be prescribed. If you have done a dry retinoscopy, you can give refraction immediately. And if it is a wet retinoscopy, you have to go for a post metallic test. Generally, it is done three days after homotropin or cyclopentolate or after three weeks after atropine use because there is a too much midriasis and cycloplegia after use of atropine. So in subjective refraction, you have to adjust the subjective adjustment of refraction, refinement of refraction and binocular balancing. So I will not go into details of this. This will be taught in your clinicals when you will be in our OPD. But just to know the subjective adjustment of refraction, it is a trial and error method. You have to ask the patient which glass is good. So it is a trial and then you have to refine the cylinder. So there is a one instrument that is called as Jackson's cross cylinder. So you are using this Jackson's cross cylinder and you are asking as it is a subjective, the patient will respond how he is seeing. So you are examining here quality as well as quantity of his vision. So this is a subjective test and patient will answer then you have to do the verification of strength of the cylinder then verification of axis of cylinder and for that there is a test that is called as a astigmatic test so patient will answer then there is a stenopic slit test for the refining of the spear there is a fogging technique and there is a duochrome test so this is a short note for you. What is the duochrome test? You have to go into your books and you have to write this 
this can be asked for your theory paper duochrome test for four marks and there is a subjective binocular balancing also that will be dealt all this in your clinical postings so correction for near vision means when you are correcting for distance you have to think for the near vision in my visual acuity lecture i told the distance vision by snell and chart you are uh, making the patient 6 by 6 just like that for near vision the patient has to see at a 33 cm you can have a chart that is called as a near vision chart that is a jagger chart or near vision chart so that will be dealt in your next uh, lecture that is a presbyopia or hypermetropia after the age of 40 generally the person or who are having a requirement for near vision they will complain for the near vision so immetropic patient when he enters into age of 40 at the age of 40 he requires a correction for near vision and for the other per, uh, persons that is hypermetropic he will require earlier correction for near vision and for myopic patients they will have a good vision for a near only they will require a correction for distance vision so that all will be shown and dealt with your clinical postings so thank you here with we are um, ending our uh, topic on refraction and retinoscopy and from next onwards we will deal with the refractive errors that is myopia hypermetropia and presbyopia and astigmatism all these can be asked for your short note as well as they can be a longer question and you can uh, have this from your bharti vidyapeeth university question papers so here with we are ending the retinoscopy and refractions thank you